Buongiorno. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to welcome our guests and to all those who are here present today, as well as to the many people who are connected with us from remote, from the uh, various online platforms, as well as in the Italian and foreign squares. Today, we're going to deal with a very important central topic that has uh, long been debated over recent months and the pandemic uh, has made this topic even more urgent. We will attempt to deal with this topic from a number of points of view, from the point of view of governance, from the point of view of uh, whether it is more appropriate to have a regional management or a national management of health, uh, specialization, high specialization or inclusiveness. We're going to discuss, discuss these issues with the main protagonists of the recent months. We've often had the chance to uh, see them on TV or we've often heard their views on the papers uh, commenting the pandemic and the emerging situations that have derived. Here with us we have the uh, president of uh, the uh, Sicily region, Nello Musumeci. Then we have uh, Attilio Fontana, president of the Lombardy region. We'll probably have with us Michele Emiliano, the president of the Apulia region. Before leaving the floor to the presidents of these regions, I would like to introduce to you Professor Sabrina Nuti, the Chancellor of Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna uh, from Pisa, an economist who's uh, long investigated the issues related to the management of health systems and not only the Italian one. So Professor Nuti will certainly give us an overview of how the Italian system has reacted to the COVID-19 pandemic and she's going also to illustrate what the differences between our systems uh, and other countries' systems have been in managing this emergency. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, organizers of the Rimini meeting for their kind invitation to this session. I am very happy to participate because the topic we are dealing with today is actually the very topic of my research activity over the last 30 years. So this is a topic that, has, that is particularly dear to me. And as a Chancellor of Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna, furthermore, I can say that Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna has extensively dealt its research, with its research activities um, and has supported about half of the Italian regions in managing this issue in supporting them uh, when it comes to governance issues uh, and performance issues related to the health sector. So that is why I'm very happy to contribute to the discussion today. I'd like to start from Article 32 of the Italian Constitution, which is our beacon in this respect. Uh, the very first uh, paragraph of the article tells us a lot. The Italian Republic protects health uh, as a fundamental human right and as an interest of the entire community. And it guarantees uh, uh, the right to health, access to health uh, to those uh, who are in need. So this paragraph tells us two basic things. First of all, the right of health of the individual, which is counterbalanced by the interest of the community. And it is here, it is a, a dichotomy between the right of the individual and the right of the community, the interest of the community, actually lies the challenge that uh, the health systems of a universal nature uh, have to deal with. So how has Italy dealt with this right before, during and after the COVID emergency? How has the Italian system dealt with these issues uh, and its regions? Whenever I address this issue with my students, I always define the Italian system as a heroic system, as a glorious one. And that is because all international data, it's not only Santana, the Santana School that says, but also, for example, the Globin uh, um, uh, Bulletin of Disease that is published every year on Lancet, uh, published by a number of outstanding scholars from all over the world uh, who compare the outcomes uh, and the added value that each country reach in the sector of health. Well, within this comparison, Italy has always ranked among the very first positions. This work 
provides for a comparison of a number of aspects, the Mediterranean diet, a good climate, but it also um, compares, for example, data um, in a number of pathologies, 32 pathologies. So if the health system is a quality system and is timely in its reaction, well, it then succeeds in reducing the problems, it succeeds in uh, extending the average life, the life expectancy of the uh, patient. When uh, 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 analyzing 32 pathologies, Italy has always ranked among the first positions much better uh, than Germany, England and many other countries with which we normally draw comparisons with. What the study uh, clearly highlights is also the fact that these results are excellent if compared to the so-called socio-demographic index, which is an indicator that brings together income with education and uh, the fertility rate. So it basically shows uh, how much a country can give in terms of resources. And here Italy is basically on the frontier. Basically, Italy is producing its uh, most, uh, the maximum, when it comes to the contribution it gives for this essential health. Uh, this is just but a few examples. I can give you even more examples. If necessary, I will do it during the session. There's data I can mention referring to uh, OECD data, which tells us that our hospitalization rate in Italy is half of that of Germany. So this clearly shows uh, that we have already done some kind of a slimming diet uh, thanks to the ministerial decree of 2015 and we have reduced the number of hospitalizations, useless hospitalizations, uh, the inappropriate ones. So basically we have reached very significant performance uh, uh, when it comes to the resources that we have um, uh, uh, allocated for the health sector. This is something that should be highlighted because uh, the a European Commission indicator uh, on the citizens' satisfaction level shows that Italy is, does not rank in such a high position. Based on that index, uh, when the Italian citizens are asked whether they think that the Italian system is capable of meeting their needs and whether it is performing, they do not give a positive evaluation of what they receive. And this is a serious issue because if you look at objective data, well then performance is much higher than that registered by most European countries. Although our Italian citizens do not need this, uh, uh, they notice that only when they are in, in need. The Italian health system has faced the COVID emergency with its minimum resources. So with no safety margins, with no positive redundancy, in other words, we have no possibility of having additional resources that can be used in cases of emergency. So let us then analyze, let us assess what has um, happened during the COVID emergency and what should be modified after the COVID emergency in the third stage that we're currently living in. I believe that um, we have learned a lesson. We have realized that, that our health system is particularly important. It matters. It matters for politics, for health professionals, and it is in the very heart of each Italian citizen. This we have seen very clearly. Uh, if you look at the great care and attention that each citizen has uh, um, given in collaborating with the health authorities in contributing directly or indirectly to the Italian health emergency. We have all realized that health is a starting point, that without health an economic and social system cannot uh, progress or work. And this is uh, a kind of awareness, a form of awareness that we deeply needed because we are too much accustomed at criticizing. We always keep on saying that there's waste everywhere, that there's something that is not working everywhere, but this emergency has shown that our health system, in spite of the limited financial resources, is a, a great uh, and well-performing system. Of course, we've understood that certain things could have worked better, that they could have been better organized. So let us try and briefly list what lessons 
we uh, have learned. We have first learned that hospitals are fundamental, that they are a reference point. However, they should not be uh, considered centers of production. They should be considered as uh, nodes of a network and they work only provided that they are well connected to the others, to the other um, care assets that are equally fundamental. We have understood that the answer that our um, hospitals can give is not an answer that should be in a way aim at the maximum efficiency, but rather it should aim at maximum efficiency and effectiveness, uh, thereby also guaranteeing uh, minimum margins of safety. You cannot expect that you can properly deal with uh, COVID by, in a way, shutting off, uh, by closing normal uh, care uh, pathways. According to data, 50% uh, uh, hospitalizations due to infarctions have been registered, and this is a reason for concern. We were not ready. Not only Italy, of course, I mean, this has happened uh, the world over. We were not uh, accustomed at organizing the emergency pathway and then uh, uh, a parallel uh, um, pathway of uh, ordinary care. I mean, we've, we've then reached that stage. This lesson, however, has to be learned and it, it, is, it has to be there to stay. We have to organize our work in order to be resilient and organize our work in short times without stepping back from the levels of care that we're capable of providing now and the results we've given so far. We have understood that the territorial system is of paramount importance. It provides for the assistance and the care of the patient at his or her own home and this can be done if the network works and provided that the two key systems uh, uh, of the health system actually function. So proximity on the one hand, uh, but at the other, uh, on the other side, excellency. And excellency goes hand in hand with uh, the concentration of skills. So in this case, concentration of skills means that you also have physical places in which researchers work together, what you can guarantee innovation. How can we bring together proximity and excellency? I think this is the challenge. Here lies the challenge of the period after the COVID emergency. And here, the integration of IT systems are more than welcome. Uh, scientific research are, is more than working. The same applies for telemedicine, because telemedicine can help combine excellency, which is actually uh, linked with the concentration of skills, with assistance, uh, with home care, home assistance. I think this is a fundamental issue that we are currently facing in Italy and not only in Italy. Um, there's a last point I'd like uh, to highlight and then I leave the floor to the presidents of the individual regions. Uh, uh, but there's a point, this is a point that I think is fundamental and it pertains to the relation between the centre and the regions. I personally believe that a health an effective health system and an efficient health system needs a regional system. This is paramount. I mean, you cannot possibly expect to govern hospitals from the center, from Rome. You cannot uh, uh, perceive the needs of uh, geographical areas which are so far away from uh, the center. This has been one of the main strengths of Scuola Regionale Sant'An. I mean, providing support to regional hospitals. The Italian regions, of course, we all know, are very different one from the others, and the health system has to be optimized and in order for it to provide a good uh, programming work. We have 21 regions, but then we have uh, Lombardy, and uh, President Fontana knows, uh, and Lombardy is as large as Holland, and then we have Valle d'Aosta with 120,000 inhabitants. So clearly, uh, the Aosta Valley has to, in a way, uh, be supported by the regions. It cannot possibly think of guaranteeing certain levels of uh, uh, um, response with such a low number of inhabitants. But the regional system has worked. We have seen 
with the results based on the results we have obtained, although we have to say that uh, there is this issue of the minimum size of the regions. In cases of emergency, of course, uh, decisions, uh, clear decisions uh, have uh, to be made and they uh, should be given to the center in terms of competence and ability and uh, timeliness of reaction. This is also essential. This has also been uh, something that has been demanded by the uh, presidents of the regions. In case of emergency, it's important to discuss very little and find uh, and speak with a single voice in a uniform way, uh, thereby avoiding inequalities or uh, problems of equality all over the territory. So I believe that here too, the uh, the conference uh, uh, between the state and the regions, the between the Italian state and the regions should in a way find uh, an agreement, especially when it comes to uh, conditions of emergency. Thank you very much, Professor Nuti. What uh, you have discussed uh, has uh, highlighted all the various regions uh, we should discuss. So Nello Musumeci, the center, the periphery, then governance, uh, uh, hiring recruitment rules in case of pandemic resilience, and then the dimension of the health system that also has to consider ordinary management. So this issue of the perception between citizens and the reality, this is something that also kind of creates uh, obstacles uh, for politics. Uh, First of all, good morning. First of all, good morning also to those who are connected from remote. Uh, greetings to the Chancellor of Sant'Anna and uh, greetings also to my colleague, uh, Attilio Fontana. Thanks once again for this additional opportunity you've given me to uh, participate in the Rimini meeting. The pandemic this year has strengthened and confirmed the role of the regions, both ordinary regions and regions with a special statute. With truly and clearly demonstrated that we have reacted promptly and been up to our responsibilities. Some have mentioned the conflicts between the regions and the central government. In spite of the dramatic context in which these decisions were made, I think this has been a good occasion to kind of um, uh, um, in a way prove the effectiveness of this relation between the center and the periphery that has not sometimes been clear. This relation has sometimes been um, hampered by ideological prejudices that should never be there if you work as a representative of the institutions and especially if you do so in a difficult context like the one uh, we've gone through, like the pandemic, the one of a pandemic. This has been one of the most difficult pandemics that mankind has uh, uh, dealt with and possibly since 1918, uh, the most difficult one. We as presidents of the regions have partly been, uh, uh, I mean, find ourselves unprepared in terms of our own personal experience because we've, uh, we were all prepared to deal with uh, uh, town planning issues, development issues. Uh, we have made no special courses to face uh, a serious uh, pandemic. And yet, we've been up to the test. We've overcome the test, although with difficulty. At the same time, uh, some representatives of the media have tried to convey uh, an equation which is not that grounded. Basically, the message that has uh, gone through was that if, good, if things go well, well, the merit goes to the state. If, good, if things go wrong, well, the, uh, the, the presidents of the regions are to blame. This is something that is truly ungrounded, ungrounded because uh, the Central government has sometimes not been effective uh, at times. Uh, for example, when uh, uh, personal protective equipment uh, were sort of, uh, we've often uh, waited uh, uh, for weeks uh, for these equipment or for ventilators to come. So in that case, the state was unprepared. When a pandemic appears, a state that is 
capable of managing emergency is not looking for supplies on the market, but it rather kind of orders two or three Italian companies uh, imposing them to work for the state uh, and to produce, let's say, uh, 20 or 50 million of a given uh, uh, PPE. But looking on the market, well, uh, the situation was that each region had to equip itself. And when it comes to Sicily, for example, we had a special relation. We have a special relation with Ismet that is connected with the University of Pittsburgh. And so we had to buy 150,000 tons of material. We had to rent planes to have the material be forwarded from China to the airport of Palermo. Only this way could we uh, in a way, make up for this need, face this need, because that was a, a need that made it difficult for the very same doctors to work. The very same doctors in Sicily had to wear just one mask because they didn't have enough PPE. So, the state has sometimes not been effective. We've never speculated on that. Allow me also to mention another example. There was an evening, that evening in which stage two had to be started. The guidelines were not there. We as presidents of the region were waiting to be convened and Governor Fontana, President Fontana knows as well. We were waiting to be convened to agree uh, on the guidelines and we had to wait until 3 a.m. in the night and in six hours alone each region set up a number of guidelines which were then adopted by the state and then finally we managed to, to kind of uh, um, to have a situation to unblock a situation that could actually create problems between the regions and the state the regions of course had their own moments of weaknesses because we were not experienced however We've been able to manage a situation that was terribly difficult, also in agreement with uh, uh, some kind of a collective discipline. Uh, and that is because we uh, from Sicily sometimes are considered to be uh, actually individualistic uh, to not to care too much about things, but we in Sicily have proven that we've been particularly that we that we have paid particular attention and discipline. We've been disciplined and strict uh, because this actually this was my guideline ever since the very beginning. So to go back to your question, uh, of course. We had to take stance of a situation. On the one hand, we had uh, uh, different uh, health systems in the various Italian regions. On the other hand, the state expected uh, from the regions a lot of strictness in public expenditure. Actually, in Sicily, we contribute for up to 49% uh, to the uh, public expenditure in health. However, following the epidemic, we could acknowledge that the Sicilian health system really needed some corrections and interventions that would not be brought to light in an ordinary situation, in a normal situation. So that is why uh, individually, autonomously, and always in compliance with the general framework provided by the state and uh, once again, this testifies to the respect paid by uh, regional presidents uh, uh, to the guidelines of uh, the state. I think there were only two ordinances that were uh, kind of rejected by the central government uh, in a total number, out of a total number of tens of ordinances. So we had to actually acknowledge that the health system in Sicily, so in an island that is exposed to all possible man-made risks or risks created by natural disasters. For example, seismic risk, industrial risk, risks created by volcanoes or uh, wood fires. I mean, we didn't have 
a health system that was so ready to deal with the emergency. But in spite of this, we brought together 735 intensive care unit beds. We mobilized 1,000 beds in, ho in hotels for uh, COVID positive patients that did not need hospitalizations. We hired extraordinary human resources for hospitals. We created alternative corridors in hospitals. And all of this made it possible for us to face this condition, this situation, without specific traumas. And then, I mean, what comes next still has to be designed, also based on the uncertain uh, um, indications coming from starting from the school, because what we know is only a date, but still we don't have any guidelines uh, that find the convergence of the subjects involved. I mean, families live in anxiety. The risk is that epidemiological data uh, forces uh, to postpone uh, the beginning of the school, but we truly sincerely hope that at least we get some indication when it comes uh, to school policy. So the right and duty of our kids to go to school, combining this needs of theirs with those of their families and their, uh, at the same time, protect their right to health, that all of this actually is solved in spite of the confused situation we have today. Thank you. Thank you. President Fontana, um, your region gave uh, uh, an extraordinary answer uh, even to create those beds that were missing at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, uh, your region is at the forefront in the dialogue with the central government. What can you say about that? And then we will talk about what comes next. Well, first of all, uh, uh, let me thank you for inviting me. Uh, it is always a pleasure for me to be at the Rimini meeting, which is uh, a fundamental step where we can have a dialogue, where we can discuss, and where we can tackle problems with no biases. Second, uh, I apologize uh, for the way uh, you're watching me, because I'm at home and I'm not a very good director, so I couldn't find a very good location, so I apologize for that. Anyway, I totally agree with what was said by uh, Professor Nuti in her outline. Let me add something to what she said. Where there is uh, different activities uh, promoted by the regions, and we know that uh, healthcare uh, is managed uh, by the regions and the central state, well, uh, worldwide, uh, uh, Italy uh, uh, ranks uh, among the top countries. When uh, the uh, state has exclusive competence uh, on some topics, for example, justice, uh, um, Italy ranks very low uh, worldwide. Um, we rank about uh, um, 180th. So, what the, uh, the regions uh, did uh, during the uh, pandemic uh, um, was really excellent. Regions did play uh, a fundamental role in that. And let me say that if probably uh, uh, the regions uh, had had uh, more uh, independence in uh, managing the epidemic, uh, many problems could have been avoided. Uh, uh, our staff would have been stronger. I always say uh, that uh, if I uh, had been able to uh, recruit doctors and nurses, it would have been much better. But there was a national law that was preventing me from doing that. I did have the resources to uh, recruit them, so I wouldn't have spent uh, national money. Uh, in that case, if I had been able to do that, uh, our reaction would have been much stronger. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. Well, uh, I believe that uh, during the emergency, uh, oh, we've seen something else which is uh, essential, and uh, uh, Musumeci mentioned that. 
as in the ability at a local level uh, to um, change uh, the organization and also the structure of uh, hospitals and the different words um, uh, which were really uh, dedicated, which were highly specialized, could actually meet the different needs uh, under the emergency. We have uh, more than doubled intensive care units that we had at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, we manage to uh, meet the needs of those uh, patients needing ventilators and needing uh, oxygen to breathe and to survive. I believe that this is very important. Equally important is the fact that uh, at some point, uh, there was a tension with the central government, uh, but uh, uh, actually, uh, we've, we never disagreed from an ideological point of view, but basically, sometimes we were not happy with some answers uh, that would never be provided by the government. Uh, uh, a PPE that uh, never arrived, uh, requests uh, that were not met, uh, the fact that at some point uh, we really felt alone uh, in uh, dealing with the pandemic. Uh, there, there are also uh, some uh, uh, um, activities made by the central government uh, that uh, uh, left us a bit surprised. There was an article written by Ferruccio De Bortoli uh, talking about a sort of uh, abandonment uh, of uh, uh, Lombardy uh, that find itself alone in uh, dealing with the pandemic. So it was abandoned by the central government. Certainly, that uh, um, uh, gave us uh, uh, a lot more uh, resilience. I believe that uh, the people in Lombardy uh, really uh, showed uh, its uh, high sense of uh, responsibility as happened everywhere in the rest of Italy. But during the pandemic, uh, the people in Lombardy uh, uh, were really able to uh, show an excellent response, sense of responsibility. Let's not forget that uh, at the beginning, uh, our conditions were far worse than the rest of the country. What happened in Lombardy can actually be compared only to what happened in some urban areas around the world. We can only be compared, for example, to New York, Madrid, or Brussels. The pandemic was so aggressive, the virus was so violent in Lombardy that uh, it was a situation that uh, could hardly be found elsewhere. So, under this context, we were able uh, to uh, uh, solve the uh, problem. Uh, we started with a very dramatic situation, but step by step, uh, we managed to uh, uh, solve the solution, and uh, we uh, gave uh, um, uh, excellent uh, answers, and uh, uh, we uh, did uh, everything useful to go back to normal. Now, our normal life for us uh, is uh, particularly uh, important. As Professor Nuti said, now uh, we also have to start uh, reorganizing the relations between uh, 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 regions and progress in science and telemedicine and uh, digitization. This is extremely important, and we were already thinking about that, but probably the pandemic has forced us to um, be faster in that and to focus uh, uh, even more on these topics, because uh, this is the way ahead, together with prevention. Prevention is yet another topic uh, uh, which is absolutely necessary to implement.
and that is necessary in order to, sus to ensure a sustainable healthcare uh, system uh, in Italy. Also, we need to, to focus on users of healthcare systems because let's not forget that we have an aging population. And uh, in 2025, we expect that in Italy uh, there will be 24.7% um, uh, of elderly people, out of which 12% will be uh, uh, made up of non self sufficient people. So, uh, this is a problem we're now dealing with with our general director, uh, Mr. Trivelli. Um, we are dealing with this very complex problem, uh, and this is going to be fundamental in order to continue providing our citizens with a very good healthcare system. We will continue talking to you, uh, Professor Fontana, because now funds will be allocated, there will be new recruits of medical and paramedical staff. What are the priorities, in your opinion, in the development of the uh, healthcare system in Lombardy? And then we'll go back to Nello Muldimici, and then uh, Professor Nuti maybe will tell us uh, uh, how to efficiently allocate these resources. Well, I believe that... Uh, 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 we need to continue uh, um, uh, solving uh, uh, the uh, new situation that has come about. Uh, during the pandemic, for example, uh, we had to uh, leave aside uh, um, the uh, um, uh, ordinary activities in the healthcare system. So uh, we have to deal with that first and foremost. Uh, we need to be uh, prepared uh, to uh, any coming back of the uh, epidemic wave. Um, Unfortunately, numbers are increasing, that give us reason for concern, but I think that this situation is due to the fact that the uh, virus is now coming from uh, abroad, with people coming back from uh, abroad, so uh, we need to work uh, at a regional level. And uh, our professionals uh, are uh, focusing on that. We need to uh, manage the different uh, uh, virus outbreaks and uh, limit them, uh, constrain them, uh, in order to prevent the virus from disseminating. Also, uh, we needed to design a, a structural network uh, uh, enabling us to manage day-to-day uh, -day activities uh, and we also need to be uh, prepared uh, for anything that might happen. And this has to do with uh, planning, which unfortunately uh, in this country um, is uh, perceived as something negative. When we started, uh, we lacked legislation under emergency conditions. We've worked on that, and we uh, designed uh, infrastructures whose purpose was to provide a specific message. We organized two hospitals, one in Bergamo and one in Milan, in order to increase the number of beds and the number of intensive care units, which at the beginning played a fundamental role to provide a prompt answer, but today they are still important for planning purposes. The central government imposed us to uh, increase the number of intensive care units, which we are trying to do. How to do that? Uh, well, with planning. So we will need to invest on new recruits. Thank God, uh, thanks to the pandemic, uh, we've been able to start recruiting new staff, although uh, we will need to continue recruiting. We will, try, uh, we will need to try and organize a better connection between uh, primary care and hospitals. We will need to continue investing on a technological improvement of our hospitals. I do believe that uh, public health care um, must be the uh, beacon of the whole uh, healthcare system, even from a technological point of view. So we need to invest uh, on training. Uh, we need to uh, uh, have uh, a larger number of people and uh, 
Um, maybe uh, we will have to review the numerous clauses system at university to enable uh, uh, more students uh, to go to um, uh, uh, medicine school. Uh, we are already working on that. Uh, we are now uh, uh, creating new hospitals. And in general terms, maybe we will need to be brave enough uh, to uh, have faster procedures. We will need to be uh, brave enough to overcome the problem of bureaucracy. If Lombardy, for example, decides to create a hospital, when it starts uh, building the hospital, if there is no uh, uh, legal interruptions, if there's no legal problems, if we need four years to build the hospital, well, maybe there's something which is not working here. Well, that was not accepted uh, even before the COVID, but that absolutely cannot be accepted after the pandemic. Thank you, President Musumeci. Uh, new resources will arrive, even from Europe. Uh, what are the priorities for the uh, region of Sicily? Well, uh, Together with the Councillor for Health uh, Healthcare, uh, Mr. Razza, uh, we have already uh, designed a new plan uh, on how to use the resources. I think that our priority is not just on building new hospitals and new uh, healthcare infrastructures, but also on innovation, digitization, and uh, new technologies, as well as on research. We already have uh, three research institutes in Sicily. We are now working with the RIMED Foundation in order to uh, uh, create uh, another research center. Uh, we uh, are already working positively with universities. We have increased the number of grants and scholarships. Universities now uh, are uh, pushing on uh, uh, specialized schools. We are. We do believe that we need to build a new hospitals, uh, not just uh, in Palermo, Catania, and Messina, the main, the main three cities in Sicily, in Sicily, but also on the mainland. Caltanissetta. In Caltanissetta, there will be a highly specialized training schools for uh, uh, medical staff and a research center. 1.5 billion will be allocated to a new hospital in Syracuse and Palermo. Uh, we have uh, completed the hospital San Marco in Catania, and uh, that was done uh, in two and a half years. We still have uh, a few months ahead to complete a project. Uh, which has to prepare the uh, original healthcare system to tackle with any uh, uh, future emergency. Hopefully, that will never be the case. Healthcare accounts for 12.5% to the creation of the regional GDP. So, to us, Healthcare not only has to do with the right to uh, health, which is a constitutional right in itself, but we do believe that uh, healthcare must be uh, strengthened, going beyond the constraints uh, imposed by the uh, central government in the past. So we are ready to look ahead and to work. The only obstacle, the only enemy, not only in Sicily, is bureaucracy. If we could export uh, uh, the method used to rebuild uh, uh, the Morandi Bridge uh, throughout Italy, then we would relaunch the economy. Uh, we would uh, allocate all the money that, can, that has not been used for years. Uh, in Sicily, it takes even five years from when you decide to build something and when you start actually building something, because actually two laws, too many laws, uh, pose a lot of obstacles and uh, constraints. So a good healthcare system and um, 
with uh, our uh, willingness to implement all the different activities, I think that we will be able to be optimistic for the future. Now, this is the good that uh, mentioned by Draghi. Professor Nuti, if you had to allocate these resources, where would you allocate them in the national healthcare system? Well, talking about all the money coming from the EU and the recovery funds, uh, uh, these resources should not uh, uh, be uh, allocated to day-to-day uh, -day expenses, daily expenses, uh, but to investments. So we needed to uh, design uh, to find out uh, what are the sectors where we need to invest so that the healthcare system can be more efficient while uh, uh, reducing uh, uh, um, daily expenditure, uh, expenditure for daily activities. These are debts uh, that will be given to our children, so we need to manage them as responsibly as possible. So definitely um, what is needed uh, is uh, investments uh, to um, um, manage our uh, healthcare facilities more efficiently. The healthcare system is always very complex. Uh, there's already existing infrastructures which are very difficult uh, to close because they do play a very important role where they are located. And we know that uh, uh, many citizens are very sensitive to that. Uh, when you talk about uh, closing a birth center, a birth ward, uh, uh, um, it's very difficult um, because the population reacts to that. So I think that uh, uh, having a more efficient network uh, is one of the top priorities. Let's think about universities, for example. Uh, uh, they uh, focus on many different rules, uh, having, for example, uh, uh, facilities uh, uh, that are uh, earthquake resistant, but then uh, they don't have uh, the resources uh, to spend on uh, other more important issues. So we need to invest uh, in the network uh, to make it more effective. As President Fontana said, we also needed to invest on technological innovation. The healthcare system uh, has to uh, collaborate with the world of research universities and the economic sector. This is key. To some extent, uh, we have worked in silos. Uh, Whereas uh, healthcare is a cross cultural sector. Is a, um, in Santana, uh, for example, uh, we work a lot on robotics. Robotics uh, has always been uh, uh, one of the main assets uh, of the uh, uh, Italian uh, uh, manufacturing sector. Why uh, can we not uh, use this potential and these Italian skills, these Italian uh, excellences, uh, um, and make it available to healthcare? We are not as yet uh, automated in order to avoid uh, using human resources uh, that can be replaced by robots. Uh, let's uh, think about uh, sanitizing the different environments, uh, for example. In that context, robots can be very useful, and we can teach that to the rest of the world. So I would like to have investments where our Italian skills and excellencies can change the world, the, the way we deliver care by providing a prompter answer and a more efficient answer. Let's uh, think about all the islands, for example, the peripheral areas, mountain areas. Uh, uh, we don't want the population to get away from these areas. Uh, there's now people going back to these areas. How can we ensure the safety of patients living in these areas? From this point of view, uh, COVID has been a bench test. Oncological patients, for example, who were told not to go to hospitals, how have we treated them. Uh, we, have we managed uh, to provide uh, treatment at home? Even uh, um, 
uh, ensuring a connection uh, at home in video between uh, the patient and the doctor uh, can make the patient feel safer. I think we need investments on that. And if we can invest with a cross-cutting approach, uh, uh, and exploiting uh, all our skills uh, that we also have inside university, then in that case, uh, we can really have uh, a more performing uh, system while reducing costs. So, uh, uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, schools will reopen. Will you be ready, uh, President Fontana, and how? Well, I see a lot of confusion here, and that gives me reason for concern. There is one problem ahead, as in how to take our children to school, and this problem has not yet been solved. For months I've been saying that the uh, uh, public transport system, with the current rules of social distancing, will not be able to uh, take all our children to school unless we manage to uh, have uh, um, a diversification in uh, the uh, uh, timetable of schools, as in uh, students should start the school at different times of the day. So far, no answer has been given. I am convinced that uh, Italy at present uh, cannot uh, uh, renounce reopening schools and universities. Otherwise, we risk not just losing credibility, but first and foremost, uh, uh, we risk uh, uh, losing something which is fundamental for our children, as in the uh, 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 possibility to uh, stay with others, to socialize with others. A school uh, uh, is has not only to do with teaching, but with a lot more. Um, hopefully, uh, we will uh, find a solution uh, on that, and by the 14th of September, we will be able to reopen schools. But uh, I'm uh, somewhat worried, I have to say. Uh, President Musumeci. Well, there's a lot of confusion on that. Uh, Rome uh, is not reassuring on that. Uh, even uh, the polit different political stances uh, uh, are not the same within the majority. It is difficult to uh, ensure the right and duty to school for our children. On the other, it is difficult to ensure the right and duty of protecting their health. I think that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we will need to see how the uh, situation will evolve over the next uh, uh, two weeks, but the school system is uh, strongly connected to the uh, uh, working system uh, because uh, uh, families are affected by that, by uh, the fact that uh, uh, maybe students won't be able to go back to school. So I hope that Rome will give us one solution and will speak with only one voice, because so far things are, are not clear, I have to say. But I hope that the epidemiologic data will enable our children to go back to school. It is This is also um, a psychological problem. And uh, as Professor Nuti said, uh, uh, um, uh, this also has to do with the constraints uh, which have influenced the situation in the past. So um, uh, we need to have uh, uh, um, a higher convergence of ideas and hopefully uh, epidemiological data will enable us uh, uh, and our children to uh, go back to school. Thank you very much. Time is uh, over. Thank you very much to Professor Nuti, to President Attilio Fontana, President uh, Nello Musumeci, and goodbye. Uh, see you at the next sessions of the meeting. Goodbye, and thank you very much to you all.